Welcome back to the den. I'm Tobin and in this video I want to share with you my top 10 favorite fall winter releases seasonals from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. I have I've been putting together some top favorite lists for PAA. I have close to 100 sets of PAA. About 90 of them are different sets because I've collected different tubs and things over the years. Anyways, not why you're here. But I have 18 that I classify that could fall into this category. Getting it down to 10 was extremely hard. I enjoy all of them. There's a couple that are okay to good, but like literally all of them I love and they all have a time and a place that is perfect. And many of them I think are great all year round. Let's start with the first one, one of my favorites, and it is absolutely great all year round. Let's get into this and in no particular order. I love them all. It'd be way too hard to put them in order. First, and the one I'm wearing to work today, the EDP and solid, in English, Malbolge. In Italian, it's Malbolge. It's an esoteric language that was written in the late 90s for computer programming. Also the ninth level of hell in Dungeons and Dragons, or in Dante's Inferno, and the sixth level of hell in Dungeons and Dragons. In Italian, it basically means a cone-shaped cavern. Scent profile, tobacco, citrus, anise, musk, patchouli, black pepper, and benzoin resin. Dark, spicy, masculine. The benzoin resin, uh, I think helps to bring it a warmness to it. Reminiscent of like vanilla. There's no vanilla in this. I don't smell vanilla. I sprayed the EDP on, my, on the back of my left arm a few minutes ago. It doesn't smell like vanilla. But it's somehow... I think that's maybe bad. Pretend I didn't say that. I didn't say vanilla. Because there's no vanilla in it. It's dark, spicy, masculine. There's no vanilla. No vanilla. Banger. Oh, son. That damn light over there. I love this, you guys. I really do. It's freaking amazing. And, you know, one thing about it, when I first got it, I'm like, oh, the wife is going to hate this one. The wife loves it. I'll never understand that woman. I used to pretend that I did. And a few years ago, I just said, I ain't pretending no more, woman. The trade is over. The next one, I did a shave review video of not too long ago. It's one that absolutely blew me away when I first bought it. It's one that I put off for years, thinking, I'm not going to like that. When I first started collecting Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements in 2015, I was just focused on ones, you know, I still kind of knew in my hobby. And I was just focused on ones that sounded good or looked good. And then as the years went by, I started, you know, intentionally collecting, you know, my taste um, for fragrances, if you will, my nose, developed more. And so then I started just, you know, grabbing different ones all the while, never thinking that this would really appeal to me. Where was I wrong? Cider House 5. I do have the solid and the EDP of this. I have the full set, star jelly and all. It is so, so so good i should have never ever put this off oh i'll show you i'm such a goober how balls so you show you the pour on it how i play when i scoop four zero that number is important because it's how many years i promised my wife there's a joke that goes along with that till death do us part you know for life i, I promised her four years you got 40 woman four zero and since it's actually become an inside running joke and so we have a lot of fun with the number 40. sorry house five Focus Tobin. Who that? Ring around the rosy, pocket full of cider house posies. You're a douchebag. Shut up and get to the freaking video. Cider house five. Pipe smoke. Mold cider. Oak wood. Dried leaves and linseed. That's it. Cider house five. Five scent notes. Pipe smoke. Mold cider. Oak wood. Dried leaves. Linseed. Mold cider is basically apple juice with spices added to it and then heated. If you didn't put the spices in it, it would just be warm apple juice. Yeah, it's good. Oakwood, 
and self-explanatory. The dried leaves, so cool. If you live anywhere where there's trees, so like Antarctica and Greenland probably doesn't apply. Everywhere else though, you should be able to relate to the smell of dried leaves. And what's happening is as the leaves begin to decay, the sugars break down and the organic materials start to break down and they release this musky, earthy, wonderful smell that we all associate with leaves. You know, if you're a kid and you played in leaf piles, you know exactly what it smells like. When I smell the fragrance, I don't smell that. That smell is not there. This is a, you know, one of those things that everything comes together and forms this amazing fragrance. It really is. Um, this is one where all, all the instruments are playing together in the orchestra. It's just a banger. I love it. Don't overlook this. Get it while it's still available if you haven't already. Everyone that I've ever recommended it to absolutely loves it. Ask my homeboy, Angelo. He'll tell you the same. Tell him, Angelo. But certainly not least, the very first, I believe, I've given this some thought, the very first fall seasonal that I ever bought from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements was Grove. The label has since changed, and I'll attach what it should look like this year in and with it, it returns, and I expect it to. Grove and Briar, I just gave it away, usually <laughs> release at the same time. And they both have a very similar label nowadays. Back when I bought this, this was the label. Grove, kind of, it fell into that category that it spoke to me. We have oakwood, cranberry, currants, moss, and apricot. Um, currants is like fresh, slightly floral, floral um, with like a foresty vibe. And that's exactly what I get from the soap and splash. I don't really pick up the apricot. I am able to pick out notes of cranberry. And maybe I'm just mistaking the apricot in there somewhere with the cranberry, like in the dry down of the splash. I, I need to revisit it this year and really put my nose to the dry down. But the currants and the moss, along with the oak wood, create this amazing woody scent, backed up by that cranberry. And I, you know, like I'm saying, I, you know, probably the, the apricot is in there, giving it kind of this fruity holiday vibe. Grove. Oh, buddy. It's good stuff, Maynard. Next, let's start a common theme. I have like 10 or 8 bay rums from Phoenix. About half of them are seasonal bay rums. Douglas has taken the Atomic Age Bay Rum. If you've ever experienced that, you know exactly what to expect. But then he's taken that up a notch, like laid the hammer down 0 60 in like a millisecond and made what was once amazing, amazing E er. Atomic Age Bay Rum with pumpkin. Buddy, I've talked about this before. I won't spend too much time on it, I promise. I could. I love it. I love it so much. Is that how you do it? I love it. <laughs> West Indian Bay. Moro Blood Orange. Talk about that briefly in a second. Allspice. Light cinnamon. Not like a light pinch of cinnamon, but light cinnamon as in not overly robust, not overly flat, powerful. Allspice. Light cinnamon. <laughs> Ginger, nutmeg, and my resin. One more time for good measure. West Indian Bay, Moro blood, orange, all spice, light cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, and elamai resin. Okay, okay. So he takes his Atomic Age Bay Rum and he steeps it for six weeks, up to six weeks, in all spice, ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg, no clove. I don't believe there's ever been a Phoenix soap or a fragrance with clove. Doug doesn't care for the clove in it, neither do I. And I actually think that you can create that clove-esque fragrance without actually adding clove. In my opinion, some companies add too much clove, which is why I have a couple soaps back there that while I enjoy them, I'm not crazy about them. I like Bear Stern Mans. I like Sterling's, but I'm not crazy about them. I think there's too much of a clove note, and I could say that with some others. 
one of the reasons why I want to try Joe from Subtle Art is I found out that his is a light one, uh, watching Glenn Sherman's video the other day. Moro orange is more intense than a standard bitter orange. So that Moro orange is kind of what knocks down that over, over the top pumpkin-y spice type deal, in my opinion, because that Moro orange is bitter and it's intense and it brings along with it not just the citrus notes, but it also brings with it like some berry notes and it just really brightens it up. And the Ilmai resin, I may have talked about this a moment ago, peppery, woody, earthy, grassy. It totally just tames that spiciness to me, in my opinion. It makes it so much more than just bay rum with pumpkin. In my opinion, this is like Douglas and Fran flexing. Flex, flex. These holiday offerings is where we really get it to see some of the elements that makes Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements fun, that makes, that they do to make shaving fun. That's never more apparent than with the holiday offering, the shaving. The shaving, generally, in recent years, has only been available Black Friday weekend, most recently Cyber Monday, and Cyber Monday only. You get one day, one shot at this, literally. On the cover, for those who don't know, that's Ray Pope and Anthony Esposito, also known as the Italian Stallion. On the splash label, we have Douglas, the helpless victim. One thing I really like about the label too, on the soap, you have Douglas and the tricycle, and it's saying Ray Rum, Ray Rum, because of because of Ray Pope. So this is this is Ray Rum, also known as the shaving. So it, people call it two things. You can call it Ray Rum. Or the shaving. It, the name of the soap is the shaving, but it is referred to as Ray Rum. I put this one off for years as well. Why? Because I was still developing my nose. And I got it last year. Yep. This November 29th, 2021. Uh, limited number 35. You see there's on the inside of the label. Or the inside of the lid. Um, and I shouldn't have. And this is like one of the few... Bay rums that my wife loves and when I first bought it I was like man I don't know about this it came you know I did it just because it was finally time I needed it in my collection and I wanted to try it I'd been wanting to try it but they have so many things to choose from that sometimes you can't buy them all so yeah I digress buttery vanilla I think that's one of the first things that kind of was like eh? buttery vanilla and a bay rum Get the fuck out. but nope buttery vanilla fresh whipped cream toffee a dash, not a light, but a dash of nutmeg, toasted coconuts. Careful how you toast your coconuts, gentlemen. Damn, almost had it. Select West Indian herbs, AKA bay rum. Benzoin resin, never comes from a tree. Peppermint, spices, and then there's some citrus notes in there that's lime and blood orange. And again, that blood orange is bitter and helps you know tame down the rest of what's going on in there it is so good the top notes there is this buttery vanilla thing going on this creamy think like hot butter rum but as you come down out of the top notes you know the top notes in most fragrances only last five to 20 minutes and then you get into the heart notes and the heart notes will last you know 20 minutes to an hour and a half if you're lucky and then with the good fragrance, those base notes will last six to 36 hours, right? Um, should at least get six hours though. If you're not getting six hours out of the base notes, it's probably an EDT or something that may not be worth your money. I always can get a full day out of any of Doug's splashes. But you get down past that buttery vanilla and past that whipped cream, which is phenomenal and in its own right. If it doesn't last, long it's great it's fun but then you get into that bay rum and the toasted coconut the benzoin resin the peppermint the spices and the citrus and it's a straight banger to the max it really is fun level 
through the roof, big time, ultimate fun level to the roof, CK6. It's effing amazing. Last year, I didn't get the EDP because, like I said, it was just for the collection. This year, I will be. Um, and I forgot to mention with Atomic Age Bay Rum, I don't have the EDP, but I do have the solid. And the EDP uh, is definitely on my radar. Released in 2018 and sticking with the Bay Rum theme because while all their fragrances, seasonals, are not Bay Rum, he does have a handful, as you'll notice, that are. And there's one Bay Rum that didn't make this list. There's a few others. Cane, Monstroso, I Gingerbread Man. I love them, but they didn't make the list. It's just, there's so many. Space Nog. Oh, so good. So on the regular label, it looks like this. The, my wife, this is another one my wife loves. and I, I never thought I'd find Bay Rums that she likes because she full-on poo-poos. All of them, except for like two or three. But if you get the hollow label, you have Admiral Bird there from High Jump 47. Great true story behind that guy. And then up here is the old original Harvest Moon EDP space saucer, flying saucer thing. That's an Easter egg. You know where those goldfish are from? So damn good. Brown sugar, nutmeg, Madagascar vanilla. If you saw our Wrestler's Ridge review of that and the artifact, you know a little bit about Madagascar vanilla. Good stuff, Maynard. Light cinnamon, West Indian Bay, Tonka bean, benzoin resin, spiced rum. So rich, creamy, Spiced, traditional eggnog, a gourmand. It's actually made with real Madagascar hydrosol. So you get those ghost notes, those phantom notes, some people call them. It doesn't smell like eggnog. Like I love eggnog. In fact, I actually had a little bit of eggnog this morning and I finished off Umqua. And then I think there's another brand in there. I can't think of it that my wife picked up because my daughter and I, we love eggnog, like love eggnog. I can see where you would get the eggnog isk to this, but like as you notice, brown sugar, nutmeg, vanilla, light cinnamon, West Indian bay, tonka, tonka bean, benzoin resin, and spiced rum. There's no eggnog in it, right? Because eggnog is seasonings, spices. <sighs> so freaking good. If any of those notes tickle your fancy and you love Doug's Bays, jump on this. It will be available. Once it drops, it'll be available until right around the beginning of the new year, somewhere just after. It is a winter seasonal that sticks around. Um, there's only a couple that you have to jump on. One of them is the shaving, and then there's another one that you have to jump on as well. But you don't have to jump on this one, but you do need to add it to your collection. Another one that I put off for far too long, because I'll be honest, I thought it was like gimmicky. Even though the sales page says hey Tobin, it's not gimmicky. I still thought, eh, you know, I can wait. You know, all these all these seasonals, there's always so many things to buy that I'm like, next year, next year. And that's the category that this guy fell into. And once I bought it, I knew immediately that I'd been missing out. Don't let the name fool you. Lump of coal. It smells like coal, it does not. Some coal iskness to it, absolutely. The notes cool, green, woody, metallic, hollyberry, and coal stovish. It isn't like anything else in your den. So, are a lot of these other things. It has activated charcoal in it, so it's super, super slick. One of the things about activated charcoal is it's super good for you. But something a lot of people don't know is that it's super slick, super slick. In fact, you look at, you're looking at how this kind of looks funky, right? There's a story behind that. This soap led to the creation of the cube. Douglas was playing around with the activated charcoal 
and creating this fragrance. When this first came out, I believe it was only the soap. And we actually had to wait a couple of years before he even released the splash. I've only had that since last year, maybe the year before. And that's actually a lot that I've used. But this soap right here directly led to the creation of the cube. And the reason why it's all chunked up and pockmarked like that, for those who don't know, um, lump of coal, three different sets, um, get these little gemstones inside them. And each one is worth a gift card to PAA. And so I'm still not sure if he just like puts them on top or if it's inside, but I took one of my bougie Smiles for Miles scoops and I just started, and went all freaking Jack Nicholson on it or something. I didn't get a ruby. I didn't get a diamond. All I got was a lump of coal. But hey, I'm happy with it. It's freaking a banger. Like, for real, guys. For real. This shit is good. Sorry. But it, it really is. It's good. I've already said it twice, so I won't say it again. I'll whisper it. It's good stuff, Maynard. Also forgot to mention, with Space Nog, I don't have the EDP or the solid, nor do I with Lump of Coal, but I'd love to have both. And this next one, I don't have them either, but I definitely need them. Part of the reason why I don't is because they haven't been made yet. A little birdie told me that we might be able to expect them this year, though. Crossing my fingers. I've been asking for it for a couple of years now. And this is another one that you're like, I'm not going to wear that. Oh, dude. Cosmic Christmas cookies. I haven't used all that. My little bottles that I decant. My wife has one of these bottles. And I printed with my little printer thing. Of course, I can't find any that has it printed on it. But I printed a little thing out for her. that CC. And she has it in there with her edps and perfumes and all that stuff <sighs> thankfully i have the star jelly because i do have plenty of soap left and plenty of star jelly this year i will definitely have to buy another aftershave splash because my wife wears it this isn't feminine it's another one of those ones though that is definitely unisex i wear it i love it it smells so damn good the notes are burnt sugar caramel buttermilk sweet sensual vanilla but this is one of those fragrances that none of the notes really jump out to me by themselves. It smells like a killer Christmas cookie. I mean, like killer Christmas cookie. It is literally one of those ones that you open it up, like a couple of these, and you just want to grab a spoon and mow down. I mean, just... <sighs> Dude, I'm telling you guys right now, if you've, if you've passed it up, don't pass it up. And if you have it, you know why I say... You need to have it. It's like the ultimate Christmas fragrance. Yep. Okay, well maybe it's not the ultimate Christmas fragrance because maybe this next one is. And then this next one I'm only going to focus on the 2021. Keepsake Fruitcake. Each year, going back to 2018 when it was released, Keepsake and Space Nog came out in 2018. Every year... That keepsake has come out though is come out in a different collectible label i have the 2018 the 19 the 20 now thanks to banaka in 2020 i didn't buy it i'll go more detail on that in my shave of the day review video and then in 21 i jumped back on it but the pandemic there were things going on and I, I missed the train and thankfully thanks to friends i've since been able to find it this I do have the EDP of, and this year I intend to grab the solid. Most of us don't like fruitcake, right? Neither do I. Like, I don't think there's ever one, been one that I enjoy. But, in typical Phoenix artisan accoutrement fashion, they have taken something that you would think isn't wearable, certainly not for a manly man like me, it made it wearable. How? I think it's witchcraft. I think it's some voodoo, mojo, jojo, something going on. Candied fruit. That's the, that's the first note. And you know what? It's there. Candied fruit. 
butter coconut. No. Rewind. Candy fruit. It's there. Butter. Coconut. Maple sugar. Vanilla. And cake batter. In the splash, there's tobacco absolute. Not in the soap. I also have the... I'm a, I'm a schnerd and I'm a fanboy. I'm not afraid to say it. I'm a, I'm a fanboy of this hobby, period. Um, so, you know, people who want to classify me as a PAA fanboy, that's great. I'm a fanboy of the hobby in general. Um, but last year in 2021, I bought two sets of this. I won't go into that. If you never had it or ever tried it, this is what they look like. My 18, 19, and 20 still look like this too. Um, I've just been scooping up here in this top right bottom now corner. These are shave soap. Don't try to eat them, Angelo. Uh, dude, guys, it's it's a sleeper. It really is. In 2018, I bought it just for poos and giggles. And uh, <laughs> immediately I was blown away. And when it came out in 2019 with a different label, I knew I had to start collecting them. And then 2020, it came out in a different label. And there's a whole pandemic thing. And I missed it. And so 21 rolled around about two sets. That's all I got to say about that. Oh, and I forgot the sweet magic. What really makes it magical? Spiced Atomic H Bay Rum. How can I forget that? Because it's at the bottom of my note and I wasn't paying attention. I ain't gonna edit it. Deal with it, son. For real. It's freaking good. It's, I can't say enough about it. I will do a, re a, a review of this amazing fragrance. The bay rum in it is light. It is like, it's super light. This is not a bay rum. The others could be classified as bay rum, but this one, while it has bay rum in it, shut the front freaking door. Next one, I finally grabbed last year. If you're an American English speaking American like me, You'll say it one way. The native people have their own way of saying it. And no matter how you say any of these, whether it's Malbolge or Malbolge or, well, when it comes to Sawin, you can say that wrong. Sam, Sam Hain is just wrong. But we're not talking about Sam Hain when right now. Sawin, which was yesterday, November 1st. Today's November 2nd, in case you missed that. Kirmati. Kiramati is an island in the Pacific, known as Christmas Island. In the local language, the word Christmas is written Kiramati, but when they pronounce it, it's pronounced Christmas. Here on the label, this red is the island. If you Google it, if you Google Christmas Island or Kiramati Island, you will see that it is literally, in, not the reindeer, it is literally, though, in the shape of what Douglas has here on the label. It's so damn good. I had put it off, not because of, you know, anything in particular. Um, something super cool in the bottle is kind of hard to see. You actually have these bay leaves. Get it on the right side, Toby. See there? And that will impart more and more fragrance to it over time. They're real. Move, damn it. See there? Oh, look, leaves are falling. Frankincense. Myrrh. West Indy Bay. Indian Bay. Schmuck. Seaweed. Toasted oak. Ambergris. Benzoin. Blue spruce, tobacco, laudamon, and lavender. I've been trying to pick out the lavender. I need to continue to explore it. As you can see, I'm still getting to know this fragrance. Just got it last year. So damn good. So frankincense, earthy, woody, piney. It could be citrusy. And it comes from a tree. Myrrh is another tree resin. Aromatic, woody, warm and pungent. And by pungent, I don't mean stinky or bad. That's not the true meaning of the word pungent. Pungent would be sharp or strong in smell or taste. Something that is pungent has a sharp or strong smell 
or taste. And so it is a warm, strong, aromatic, woody fragrance, myrrh by itself. Seaweed uh, is clean, earthy, salty, marine. You know, and that's in there because it's Christmas Island, right? So I think that's why Douglas has thrown that in there. But not just because of that, because it's always a part of the bigger plan with PAA. And that's creating this magical freaking fragrance. You know, I, I hate using that term. I've used it many times. But really, in the English tongue, in my third grade math skills, Hakuna Matata, it's magical, man. See, I turned it into <laughs> keepsake fruitcake. Schmuck. Shimadi, you want some? <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. You're dealing with it. Oh, God, help me. So, the labdomum adds this, you know, animalic dry musk to it. And it also, um, labdomum can bring like this leathery note. And with this, I do pick up leather. And it is of my opinion that that leather note is coming from the labdomum. And it's because it's been expertly crafted in there to bring out that note. This is a masculine, amazing, woody, this is a, a man's Christmas fragrance, no doubt about it. These, you know, they're, they're fun and festive. I wouldn't say they're masculine per se. The, the, I, I wear them. And like I said before, you know, I'm confident, but I'm not so confident that I'm going to wear like a feminine fragrance or something that doesn't project confidence because that's one of the reasons why we wear a fragrance is to, you know, project confidence to enlighten a mood, to alter a mood. And so, you know, those are great for a lot of reasons, like all these fragrances, but this year I will be grabbing the EDP at the very least of this. Um, I think all these have a star jelly except for like the shaving. Um, but all of these, I want the EDPs and solids if I don't already have it in Kiermati or Christmas is one of them. Google that island. You'll see that they have this crazy crab migration to where like parts of the earth are just crab covered in these huge crabs that are like just, you know, taking over roads and stuff. Crazy cool stuff. Babble, babble, babble. Blah, 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 blah. So wait, there's more. I know I said at the beginning of the video, this is top 10. That's kind of a lie because there's two that I got to give honorable mentions to. Because like I said, I have 18. It was so hard. I love these guys up here. I do. Oh my gosh, I have two sets of cane. I have one of the old original sets. And that's one of the older soap tubs there too. And then I bought one of the new ones just because I love it. And then because I'm a schnerd. And because I can. I don't, you know, I don't have any other habits, guys. This is it. And, and you know, love it on you guys. Hey, baby, want some sugar? Nope. How about some mood spice? Oh... I believe this is like Black Friday only. Got this last year. This is the COVID edition, which is why he's wearing the mask. Freaking hilarious. So good. So it's think Old Spice, or if you have Cold Spice, think Cold Spice. No menthol. Add that woody, warm, earthy, dark, rich oud to it. It was so damn good. You get... All that Old Spice to it, except for there's this layer of wood, this layer of oud that easily makes it one of the best, if not the best, homage or clone to Old Spice, the Schulten formula that I've ever tried. I have probably six, seven, or eight. I have a handful of them from all the typical artisans. I do want to buy more. Uh, I love it. The Sterling Spice is so good. Uh, and so is Barrister Man's. Those are two of my favorites. But Oud Spice, buddy. Okay, so last but not least, and briefly, Grove was the first that I bought. After I bought Grove, I turned right around and I picked up this one. Blue Samhain. Samhain is a Celtic holiday. Celebrations begin October 31st. The actual holiday is November 1st. So much like the Christians Christmas to where they have we I am a Christian have Christmas Eve or we also celebrate right New Year's Eve the actual holiday is the day after Christmas Day New Year's Day. The same thing is true for Samhain. Samhain 
celebrations start October 31st. The holiday is November 1st. The blue comes in because of a blue moon. Blue moon is not blue. A blue moon is when you have two full moons in one calendar, calendar month. The only time that that has happened during my adult life was in 2020. In 2020, Samhain and Halloween fell on a blue moon. It was super cool. So that's why you have the blue. There's really nothing blue about this other than the old label. Notes, sandalwood, and I get the sandalwood. Oh, you guys. Burnt sugar, bourbon, and pumpkin. And it's oak barrel aged. Super simple scent notes. Sandalwood, burnt sugar, bourbon, pumpkin. Not pumpkin spice. Think hanging out with the kids, carbon jack-o'-lanterns, and that smell that you get when you're cleaning out a jack-o'-lantern, that kind of pumpkin smell is what you find in here. Now, like, it doesn't jump out in my face. I don't, like, I mean, I don't smell this or the splash and, you know, think, oh, pumpkin. It's so much more than that. Festive, boozy, warm, hints of pumpkin, woody, you know, got that sandalwood right up front, and then you get the the bourbon and the pumpkin, they mingle together down there in the bottom. It's so good. The sugar, you know, it's burnt sugar. So it's not just a sweetness. It's like a caramelized, dark sweet. It's amazing. It's just, this is one of the most masculine Halloween pumpkin type fragrances I've ever tried. Should we do more? No, let's not do more. Wish you all happy holidays. I know we didn't talk about clown fruit. Sorry about that. This is Sun and Clown Fruit. Still the same thing. Potato, potato, will o wisp, Sun and Clown Fruit, Clown Fruit, blah, whatever. That's all good stuff, Maynard. <laughs> Wormwood for the win. Happy holidays. Y'all take care. Thank you for watching. If you're still watching this, I appreciate you watching me and my ramblings. I love you so much. I love you long time. I love you so long time. It's the little big thing. It's like Toby loving on you long time. It's a little big thing. Come here, sugar. <laughs> Happy holidays.